In this video, I want to continue where we left off of stacking items. So if I pick one bread up, we have the item here. If I pick up another and another, they all stay in one slot, but you'll notice that we printed out hello on those two. So if we go to our inventory, we have the function update, which we call whenever we want to add onto the item stack. We want to go ahead and instead kind of go through and refresh, you know, all of our, well, items. So we need to kind of think about how to go about doing that because currently we don't really have a way to know what got updated, so to speak. So we could, because we're just adding it dynamically each time. So we could go through and it might be a better idea. We're just having a bunch of inventory items. So we, when we add an item to our inventory, we create the widget based upon the item data struct and we add it. That's it. We're not keeping track of it or anything like that, which we probably we could, probably could be doing. So if we look at our, let's see, where's our inventory items? We have this inventory items, it's blueprint read write. We are, let's see, I keep going back and forth. We don't really have much of, how do I say, like any way to really keep track of you know what items to update so we have this inventory item we have our text down here that we need to update which is obviously we need to actually set to one by default for the text just to have there or actually nothing because of all the empty items why did i put zero like that oops so let's think let's try to brainstorm a little bit on how to do this my guess would probably be the easiest way to do this is we could either pass in to the update function our inventory items are right here, or we could go through and just get it directly from our character each time we call update. Now, I almost feel like because we made a blueprint read write, we could do it really either way, it doesn't matter. We would just have to cast it this way. So most likely it'll be a little bit faster, even though performance in this case doesn't really matter because it's kind of an event driven. It's just something that's gonna happen once every once in a while on the client itself to pass in the inventory items to our event. So let's take this tier array here and for update inventory widget, we're gonna pass in that tier array. Let's do new inventory items like so. So we wanna pass in inventory items to that function right here, update inventory widget. And let's recompile and relaunch. All right, so we have an error. Line 13 is throwing a fit. Oh, well, that's the character where update inventory widget, overloaded mention, yeah, member function not found. Let's go to that function. And of course, that's not where I wanted to go. All right here. So I'm almost wondering if we can just not pass in structs like this, because we're not using pointers or anything. I know we can't work with pointers and structs in Unreal Engine for some reason. I wonder if it's because it's gonna complain, like with an RPC, if you don't have a constant reference to a struct. So let's see if that fixes it. Okay, so you're saying I'm in the engine, so that obviously means it fixed it. So let's bring these back up. Here's our third person character. Drag these back down a bit. We wanna add this array into the update function. So let's go to our update function. Let's make it take in an input. Type is going to be the, uh, that F, or what was it? Item data? Yeah, item data. Let's call it inventory items. Compile save and plug it in. And I forgot to make it an array. So let's change this little dot right here, which of course I can't, can't even click it, just barely, and change it to array. Okay. Plug that in, compile and save, and there we're passing it in. So what we're gonna do is do a for each. And we need to kind of tag, or not tag, but go to our grid inventory test. Let's do a, Let's see, there should be a get, get all children, which returns an array of that widget. So what we can do is here's our widget for the inventory item, which has 
this data struct. So let's actually move this stack down a little, this down a little bit to fit, which has our item data struct. We want to make sure it's public, which it is. So we have item data. So what we can do is do a for each on each one of these to see which one matches. So we loop through our current, you know, items. Let's do a uh, let's do a break item data. Let's do and see if this class equals something. Let's go ahead and get the children here. We want to do a for each. Let's see. I'm trying to think of where to organize this at. It might be bring you down. Actually, can I just break you in here? I guess that kind of works a little bit better in this case. So in our grid inventory, we're going to get all the children. We're going to iterate through them. And wherever the element, so let's cast this to a, uh, or sorry, not, yeah, we need to cast it to w underscore inventory item. And from here, we can get item data. And we can break it. So here we have item data for that slot. So now we can do a comparison check. So... Let's do if this, our item class, equals the passed in item class. Let's clean this up some. Then that means, and it looks kind of bad. Let me drag these down. Dang it. I'll drag you under here just to shorten it up. One thing I hate about Blueprint. It's pretty ugly. There we go. Okay. So if, so we're looping through our big array, our actual inventory array, then we're also going to loop through all the children of our grid inventory and cast them to our inventory item. If the item class from this inventory item widget is equal to the item class of our array that we're looping through, then we want to update that widget. So here, we want to go through and pretty much, well, the only thing we're going to update is the stack count. So let's do a, yeah, what do you call it? Let's actually, we can simplify this and make it cleaner. Let's create a function to do it for us. So let's create a function, update item. Simple as that. And we can make it take in the entire data structure. So item data. Make sure it's not an array and let's call it new item data. Grab our current item data. We're going to set it to equal the new item data. Keep it nice and clean. Simple. So let's pass this in and call it update item. And we need the new item data. And to do that, we have to recombine this structure. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Let's bring it down here and do a break instead. Like that. Okay, so we take that, we plug this guy into here. Again, let's try to clean this up just a little bit. This way we can actually see, I guess, where it's going. And then we should be good to go. Okay, so we loop through our are right here, our big inventory items array that's replicated. Then we go through and we loop through all of our children that are in our grid inventory, which obviously is our a list of uh, our inventory item widgets. We want to cast it to our inventory item widget so we can access our grid our uh, item data. So we're going to get that, which is this node here. We're going to check and see if the item class of that item is equal to the item class of this element here. If it is, then we go through and we update it. So we have to add some stuff into that update function in order to make the change to it, obviously. But that should be relatively easy. So now we just have to get or we have to go ahead and uh, 
we're probably going to want to set this up to four each with a break so that way we can end it if it matches so let's do that so yeah we're going to grab this one do a four each with a break instead like so and connect the break to this update item and clean it like this. So that should go through and call update item. So let's check it. Let's do a print string. Uh, let's split this and we'll just print out the item count. Compile save. Save all. And pick one up. Pick it up again. Prints out two, which is correct. Now it should print out three, which is also correct. So now we just have to update the information here. So let's go to our item, let's grab our text, set it as a variable, and let's do tb underscore item stack. Or better yet, item stack or item count or item stack count. Long name, but it fits. Okay, so let's delete these and set our item stack count, set text. We're going to set that text to be the item stack count. Compile save, hit play, pick up an item, nothing yet, but when we pick it up a second time, it says two. Now when we pick it up a third time, it says three. So now we I know we have a bunch of these here. Pick it up. We have eight. So we have eight of them in here and three things of bread. So eight med kits and three bread. And now we just have to fix the issue of, it's not really much of an issue, but on the event graph where we determine if it's valid, which will be the end right here, what we can do is just simply get the text box, item stack count, set text, and we're just going to plug the text into the item stack count, which by default is one, if I can even grab it, like so. And this will make it so when it first appears, it should say one. So these should both have one, one and one. Now this should be eight. And this will be three. So that takes care of that for us. So great. Now let's just check it out on the client because honestly, this should not work on the client. I pick up one. We have one. Pick up two. We have one and two. And pick up three and keep going. So it's not going to fix, it's not going to be in a grid as it's supposed to be, but the incrementation is working. So like I said before, as you can see by this issue here, we're going to have to set up and tinker with the logic in this section here. So we're going to have to create some sort of way to tell the client, hey, your inventory has been updated. So that's pretty much going to trigger in some way or another. So basically, that actually has me questioning because we're making a change to the item inside the inventory, I wonder if that onRep function is actually going to fire. Let's check it. Let's print out an on. Well, actually, let's leave this for another video because this is kind of extending on a little long. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it here. We have, we're off to a very, we're pretty good setup so far. So that's going to be it for this video. If you like what I'm doing, anyone help support me. You can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below where I have a Teen Beth Matt series just for Patrons, as well as you get early access to nearly all of my videos. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord server that's also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So, I'll see you in the next video.